Okay, so now this is this is problem three. It's just some straight up derivatives, and it's testing the three rules that we had to learn for this exam, and those are the quotient rule, which is the rule that comes up on this very first problem here. As you can see, it's a quotient. Uh, so what is the quotient rule? Let me remind you. It says that if you have a function f over a function g, and you take the derivative, then you can compute it by finding f prime g minus f g prime over g squared. So all I have to do is follow that rule here. You know, this top part is going to be f, this bottom part is going to be g, so I'll just follow the rule here. y prime is equal to, all right, so what is f prime? The 2 comes down and I get 2z, and okay, so that's f prime. Now I leave the bottom alone for the time being, and that gives me z cubed minus 1. Now I do minus, uh, leave the top alone, z squared minus 1, and now you do the derivative of the bottom, which is 3z squared. Okay, and this is all over the bottom squared, which is z cubed minus 1 squared. And it looks like you could probably clean up the top a little bit, huh? But um, I don't I don't really want to do it, so I'm not going to. So exercise. Simplify. Simplify, simplify, simplify. B is testing you on the product rule. And I guess it also assumes that you know the derivative of tangent and the derivative of secant. So let me remind you what the product rule says. It says if you have a product of two functions and you take the derivative, then the rule is f prime g plus f g prime. Okay, so what should we call f? We'll put 32 here with tangent. Call that f. Call this g. So let's do it y prime is equal to, so derivative of this first part is 32 secant squared x, and oh my god, there's another secant there. I might have to collect those and simplify, that's very tempting. And now let's do plus, now leave the first part alone and you get 32 tangent. Started to write t for 2, I think, it's getting late. Uh, 32 uh, tangent x, and now I write the derivative of secant, which is secant x tangent x. Okay, and yeah, so I, it turns out that I, surprisingly, I can resist the urge to put these together to make a secant cubed, um, but you can see that you could obviously collect some stuff. All right, no problemo, very easy. And this last question is chain rule. So the chain rule, notice that this is a composition of the square root function and also this weird fraction function. Um, okay, by the way, this is, a, this is a good candidate for logarithmic differentiation if you feel like doing it in a very fancy way. Um, all right, so what does the quotient rule say? So it's kind of hard to apply uh, the rule, like follow along with it, the way you do with the product rule and the quotient rule, but let's try. So if you take the derivative of a composition of functions, so let me just say, okay, so forget that this is f. Uh, let's say that it's y, because I don't want to have two f's around. So the outer function here, the square root, is f of x equals the square root of x, and the inner function is the stuff inside the radical is 1 plus x over e to the x, and so what this function is is f composed with g, which you can write like this. Okay, and what the chain rule is saying is when you have a composition exactly like this, then the derivative is the derivative of f composed with g, not multiplied times g, as I have noticed that some people are prone to do, times the derivative of g. 
Okay, all right. So if we're going to do this kind of like robots, we can just follow this rule. So find first find f prime. So here's f. That means f prime is um, just going to do one over two times the square root of x. And I'm I'm so confident that you can do that. You know you can convince yourself that it's the same as this. I promise. Work it out. And now what about g prime? Oh, that's kind of a pain. Um, so I'm going to do the, the quotient rule here to find g prime. Let me push the rule down. So quotient ruling, the derivative of the top is 1, so I'm not going to write it, times e to the x minus, leave the top alone. Derivative of the bottom is the same as the bottom. And now e to the x squared is the same thing as e to the 2x. And it can cancel some 2x's. And I feel the urge to do it. I feel a strong urge to cancel e to the x, e to the x, e to the x. And so what happens? It gives me 1 minus 1 minus x over e to the x. Oh my god, it's getting very simple. Um, and notice that uh, 1 minus 1 is 0. And so minus, so this is just x over e to the x. All right. Um, so, yeah, look, I've made a big mess, but what are the important parts? Check it. f is the square root of x, g of x is this, g prime is x over e to the x. I um, can't believe that worked out so nicely. All right, so this is the answer. We've known this all along, so now let's just write, write down what it is. So f prime composed with the original g. So here's your f prime, here's the original g. Let's compose them. Okay, so this is 1 over 2 times the square root of the original g function, 1 plus x over e to the x. Okay, so the, you know all this stuff is under the radical here. And it's times g prime, so times x over e to the x, and that's that's it. Okay, so let me copy it. And so remember, here's the original function. We just found the derivative, and it is that. So that was great, um, and you know this is it. This is really it, but. It's not a totally easy problem. I know people have a lot of trouble with the chain rule, so let's forget all those F's and G's and all that, and let's just do it like human beings, okay? So let's write Y equals 1 plus X over E to the X, and so it's to the 1 half power. So now let's, let's do it kind of in our heads. So how does it work? The 1 half comes down. You get 1 plus x over e to the x to the minus 1 half. And now by the chain rule, the derivative of the inside stuff pops out. And so I'll use the quotient rule to do that. And I'll get the stuff that I wrote before. Over e to the 2x. Okay, and we've already simplified that and we saw that it's just x over e to the x. Um, yeah, so how about, and so this is also the right answer. It's kind of an uglier way to, to see it, but that's also the right answer. And I'm going to give you a third right answer. I hope you, I hope that doesn't turn you off. So I've got one more in me. So let's call this y equals the square root of 1 plus x over e to the x. And now I'm going to do it using uh, this technique called logarithmic differentiation. And I think maybe in section 10 we didn't get to it yet in class. But it works like this. First apply natural log to both sides. So I'll just hit both sides of this equation with natural log. And on this side, I'm sorry it's so late I just don't have the energy to do it step by step, but if you apply natural log to this stuff, what you get is 1 half um, times natural log of 1 plus x minus 
x. And you're, you're thinking, yeesh. But it's just the laws of logarithms, okay? So the one half comes out, that's where he comes from. Um, you know, the quotient becomes subtraction. Natural log of one plus x is still here. Natural log of e to the x is just x because they're inverse functions. So that's where everything comes from. So all I did was apply natural log to both sides. Now I'm going to uh, implicitly differentiate. So on the left I get y prime over y, and on the right I get um, 1 over 1 plus x minus 1, and I can clear by the stem y. It feels like I'm going so slow, and then sometimes I watch the videos and I think, God, you're going so fast. All right, so I'm going to clear by this y, and then you get y prime is equal to y times, let's just say y over 2, uh, 1 over 1 plus x minus 1, all right? So all I did was clear by y, 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 and there's the original y, and I'll express neatly in terms of x, so I'll just sub that back in. So here's another correct answer y prime equals the square root of, is it 1 plus x over e to the x? You probably know. Yeah, it is. Okay. So that's what y is, and so there can be a 1 half here. So that's this 1 half. And here's this stuff. 1 plus x minus 1. <sighs> so that is also the right answer. So the right answer three ways for the chain rule question. And that's all. That's all for this one.